Welcome! In this video, we'll be talking about using N-Service Bus Sagas to integrate with third-party systems. If you're watching this video directly on YouTube, you can find a link to the full tutorial in the video description, where we'll show you how to build the saga we're about to talk about step by step. In an N-Service Bus system, you have a message queue and a process that handles messages in that queue. Messages are sent to the queue and are stored until the process is ready to handle them. The process gets a message from the queue, creates a transaction, and processes the message, at which point the message is complete and is removed from the queue. Together, the queue and the process form a messaging endpoint, but you usually don't have just one. You have multiple messaging endpoints, sending messages forward and backward and every which way. But message endpoints almost never form the entire system. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay, maybe not that far. That's better. Most of the time, you have to deal with some external systems. In a retail domain, for example, you might have one or more shipping providers, a payment gateway for processing credit card payments, a warehouse for managing inventory levels for the products you're selling, and a CRM system for keeping track of customer data. Of course, each of these systems has their own database as well. So how do we get everything to talk to each other? The messaging endpoints in the center form your core system. To integrate with a shipping provider, for example, we can build a shipping adapter that's responsible for communicating with the core system using messaging and using HTTP to communicate with the external system. Much more than just translating messages into HTTP and back, the adapter can act as a transaction coordinator, enabling compensating behaviors to deal with failures in the HTTP service. Adapters like this one form an integration layer, separating and insulating the core system from the outside world, including adapters to integrate with other external systems. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the integration with shipping providers, which we will build using an N-Service Bus Saga. So, what is a Saga? A Saga is nothing more than a message-driven state machine, which means that it has its own database to store its state. When a message comes in, it's processed by the message handler in the Saga. The Saga consults its stored state, makes decisions, and then can send new messages as a result. As a result, the incoming message is successfully processed and consumed, and the outgoing messages are dispatched to their destinations. But that's not all a Saga can do. A Saga also has a timeout feature, which functions like an alarm clock. The Saga can request a timeout as a reminder to wake up later and when the time comes, that message returns to be processed by the saga. Continuing the process. Any saga generally uses some combination of two different patterns. An observer saga is a passive observer. It listens as events come in from other parts of the system. And when conditions are met, it publishes events of its own. By contrast, a commander saga directs a workflow by communicating with external messaging endpoints first instructing one to do step one of a process and then receiving a response, and then continuing with the next step of the process until the workflow is complete. Now let's return to the diagram of our integration scenario and the shipping adapter we're going to build in this tutorial. How does the integration saga work? First, let's go over the requirements. Our shipping adapter needs to control shipping a package through one of two possible shipping providers. To avoid any unpleasant uses of registered trademarks, let's call our two fake shipping services Maple Shipping Service and Alpine Delivery. In our fictional world, Maple is currently cheaper. However, it also seems to be less reliable. This makes Maple our preferred delivery option. However, there is a 24-hour delivery SLA with our customers, so if Maple doesn't respond to our shipment request on time, we need to ask Alpine to deliver the package instead. The saga follows the commander style, and because it directs a workflow, we call it the ship order workflow. It starts when it receives a ship order command. It tries to find its state in the database based on the order ID, and because it's the first step in the workflow, it finds none. So it creates a new saga data and pre-fills the order ID. This is called the correlation ID, and is the value used to find the same data back when other messages arrive. The handler for ship order does two things. First, it sends a ship with maple command. Then it sets a shipping exception timeout so that if maple doesn't respond in time, we can take alternative action. 
In the best case, the ship with maple handler will immediately start processing the ship with maple command. Call the maple web service over HTTP, and then reply to the saga with a shipment accepted by maple message. When the ship order workflow saga receives this reply, it will update its saga data to show that the shipment was accepted by maple. At this point, the order is shipped, so our job here is done. But what happens if the unreliable maple web service is unavailable? In that case, we wouldn't have been able to complete the shipment within our business SLA, so the shipment accepted by Maple reply would not occur, and the Saga data would not contain accepted by Maple equals true. Now that the data is reset, we can look at what would happen if the reply had never arrived. Eventually, the shipping escalation timeout would come due, and the Saga would handle it just like any other message. Now that we've given up on Maple, the Saga will send a ship with Alpine command to a ship with Alpine handler. We also need to request a new shipping escalation timeout so we can handle any failures from Alpine and update the saga to show sent to Alpine equals true. This way, when the timeout happens again later, we'll know we already tried sending to Alpine. Now, the ship with Alpine handler is processing the ship with Alpine command. It will communicate with the Alpine web service and if successful, reply to the saga with a shipment accepted by Alpine message. When the ship order workflow receives this reply, it will update its Saga data to show that the shipment was accepted by Alpine. Once again, now the order has been shipped, but this time with the backup carrier, and our job here is done. But what if for some reason the Alpine service is unavailable as well? A lot of good that did us. Let's clear them away. Once again, the Saga data here is not correct, since Alpine did not accept our shipment, so let's reset that as well. In that case, the second shipping escalation will come due. When we analyze our Saga data and see that our order was not accepted by Maple, was sent to Alpine, and also was not accepted by Alpine, we are out of options. In this case, we publish a shipment failed event to some other part of the system. Another process can subscribe to this event and notify the sales department, who can handle this issue manually by calling either shipment provider and requesting delivery. So. That's how you use sagas to perform integration tasks with external systems. Remember, sagas are message-driven state machines and can be useful when you need to make the transition from message-driven architecture to another system or subsystem, whether internal or external, that can only communicate through an HTTP or REST API. A saga can act like a transaction coordinator when dealing with synchronous communication, enabling compensating behaviors to deal with failures in the HTTP service. Saga timeouts are a mechanism to deal with uncertainty in external integrations so that there is a trigger to take action even without an external stimulus. Remember, if you're watching this video on YouTube, the link to the tutorial where you can build this code yourself is in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial.